1853. Guys, I'm I am shaking right now. I, I'm out in the street. Hello there. Today I'm out in the middle of nowhere yet again. I'm next to a river and I'm quite near where there used to be some lead mining activity. There's a house just behind me. Nice big flat field in front of the house between the house and the river. Um, so I'm going to give it a good old bashing with the e-track. There's also a track and there's a few remnants of where the mine buildings were. I'm possibly going to go over that with the Deus. So hopefully I can get both detectors in today. So I'm starting with the e-track because I know I've got to get down deep in this pasture between the house and the river. Sometimes the river floods over it. The stuff is possibly going to be pretty deep, but I'm hoping to make some nice finds. Well, that's my first signal right on the top. And if I had keen eyes, I wouldn't even need a detector to find that. And that's a pretty awesome find. Little line cutter. Retractable little zip thing. You clip that onto your fishing vest and you've got some disgorgers getting the hook out. And that's Orvis, so that's a cracking find. Absolutely awesome. Hasn't been lying long either, it's hardly even rusted. Still just about good. It's, oh, it's even got a little, little hook sharpener there as well. That's an excellent find. Great. Hi up, here we go. Third dig, and it's a coin. It's a coin in very good condition as well. It's an old penny, which is 1907. Ooh, look at that fella. That's a lovely bust on that. And that one's Edward the Seventh. It's a lovely patina. The E-Track absolutely screamed as if it was right on the top. And there may actually be another one in there as well. Now I've snapped my spade so I'm using this big stupid thing today, but I have got another one coming. I'll get in there. Yep, another one. Another Edward the Seventh Penny. What year is that one? <laughs> 1907. <laughs> Two coins exactly the same out the same hole. Get in there. That's class. Just had another banging signal here. Right next to where I pulled up the two Ed with the seventh pennies. It's just to the right of it. Listen to this. It's reading exactly the same. 1240 on the E-Track. It's saying it's right near the top. So I think it's another penny. Now I'm using four tone ferrous so it's given the higher tone when it's nearer the top of the screen. That's pretty important because most of the good stuff comes from the top half of the screen. That's why I use ferrous. And you can't not dig that signal. You just cannot. So I'm going to give this one a live dig because I think it's a coin. Watch me be proved wrong again. Big old coin ball. <laughs> Another excellent condition, Edward the Seventh Penny. 
Now I'd be amazed if this one was also 1907. 1910. <laughs> Get in there. Three coins, little pocket spill there, lovely. Here's a signal that was quite bouncy, but it was more or less settling top right hand corner of the screen, or just off that. I'd like to think that this is a coin ball, but I'm not sure. It's a button ball. <laughs> I found loads of these buttons. It hasn't got any patterns on it, but this is a clog strap. A clog strap? Clog strap, used for keeping people's sh uh, shoes together, boots together. So you that, photo of it? Yeah, I'm videoing it. So that would go on one side, a little hook on the other. It's, it's in good condition, actually. Does that do sound? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it's recording now. <laughs> Are you going to put it on YouTube? Yeah, yep. Yeah. So this one, that would be on one side of your boot, and you'd, you'd clip it over like that, and that would keep them together. Oh, yeah. So that'll be pretty old. Here's another find. It was a bouncy signal, but we've got a half penny. Ah, uh, man. Now that's a one for the blank coin. Although I think I can just about make out a young Victoria bust on there. That's seen the inside of a few pockets. Here's another one. Where? You find it straight away? Yeah. Yep, that's another really blank coin. That one's a penny that time. I'll get in there. This is reading 1223. Looks like another halfpenny. It's a very old one, that one, by the looks of it. Or just very corroded. Yep, I'm not going to get anything off that. It's pretty much flat. This one's reading 1338, so it's it's worth a dig. Yeah, I think there's something pretty big down there. And as we're very near a lead mine, I think it may be lead. It is lead. Bit of old lead pipe. This one was reading 1247 and it's a Victorian halfpenny by the looks of it. Doesn't look like a normal one though. Can't see the date on there, unless that's the date on the head side. Yeah, it looks like it. I think that's an 1864 Victorian halfpenny. It's in pretty good condition as well. This one's reading 12.35 and it's another old penny by the looks of it. A little bit older that one. 18.62 Queen Victoria Bunhead. I just dug that up from about 7-8 inches and it's quite a nice button. It looks like a fist with a, some sort of cross, like a cross with crosses on the outside on the edge and a crown on the bottom there as well. So it's a crown, a raised fist, and a cross on the top. Obviously it's a button of some sort, but um, it's a very nice design. I've certainly never found one like that before. Get in there. That's a nice deep one. Lovely deep one. And... Is that Victoria? Yeah, I think it's a Victoria. It is. Bunhead Victoria Penny, in pretty good condition. It's actually in very good condition, 1875. Totally read that very easily. There you go, look at that. What is that? I don't know. <laughs> I don't think you can record that. Looks nice though. Like a very ornate badge or buckle or something. Oh, it is, it's a buckle of some sort. And this thing pivots. Oh, would it be like, oh. It actually still pivots. What's that for? It's for a belt or some sort of strap, but that's very ornate, that. Look at that. It's even got the cool. pins on it. That's good. That's lovely and that gave a good signal as well. Yeah. It's probably the best part of eight inches down this, whatever it is. Yeah, whatever it is. I don't know what it is. Looks like copper. doesn't appear to have anything on it. I thought it might be in a little maker's plate or something, but it's, it hasn't got anything on it. This was from approximately 10 inches down. Here we've got a little lead 
hot. That just gave an awful signal. It's bouncing around all over the place. Looks like oh, possibly a George coin. Oh man, kind of losing detail as I'm rubbing it there. It's pretty much knackered. But I would say it's maybe a George the Third. I can just make out a bust, but it's very faint. I think it's George the Third. Yep, me. I don't think it's a very good signal, but I just want to watch them dig. <laughs> no, no, just just those two sides, and then lift it back like a flap. So I'm going. That's it. Foot on it. And again, and up. That's it. It's probably something tiny, you know, you'll hug a massive hole for some, something <laughs> so small. Right then. Oh, that's a good depth. That's a good one. Right, it's on <laughs> I found it straight away. Yeah, it's a, whatever is that? What is it? No idea. An old bit of pipe or something? Give a good yeah. signal though. Yeah. Can you see it? Yeah. Down there? It's a big lad. Look at that. Can I see it? What is it? Oh, it's a buckle. Oh, epic. That's another lovely one. It's missing the pin. I must go my, um, I could go with all the things we found. Must uh -huh. it, a boot must have dismantled. A what must have dismantled? A boot? A boot. Or like a foot with all the things on it. <laughs> <Foot>, uh, <laughs> someone's foot's just <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, it's a nice yeah, one. Things go mental, James. Whoops. You what have you done to it? I don't know. Let's see if I can fix it. It, probably, it wasn't me. It was. <laughs> was it, it Ivor the Rivor? Yeah, I think he <laughs> put it too far and then when I put it back together... It, so the best buckle I've ever found has just been destroyed by two young boys. Not me. <laughs> Not me. It was him. There's no. this boy here. No, you... Looks like another coin. Another penny. It is indeed. Whose is that one? I haven't got a great deal of detail on it. Let's see, 18... 1881, 1882 possibly, so that's a Queen Victoria. Not in the best of shape. That's the one problem, going to Tekken with kids. Your gear ends up all over the field. <laughs> We've got another signal here, this one's reading 12.35. And it's here, right in front of us. And it's the eyelet of a tarpaulin. Kind of hoped that would be a coin, but it wasn't. I'm having a change of pace now. Uh, I found loads of coins and buckles and all sorts of things in the field just down the valley. But I thought I would rest my shoulder and arm a little bit because that e-track with the big coils damn heavy and brung the deus up onto a footpath and I've got my first signal it's reading 65 and it's a ring pull to be honest I feel a bit creepy <laughs> skulking about in the woods it's almost like I should be asking for donations but I'm not going to this was jumping about a bit, but it was reading somewhere between 76 and 82. Hey up. It's an old hapenny. Whose is that one? George V. Too mucky on there to get a date off it at the minute. That's um, early to mid 1900s. Here's an interesting one. It was reading 84 to 85 on the Deus. What is it? Pet safe. 
Must be off a dog or something. Oh yes it is. Got like the reference number on the back there. Holy moly! Look at the size of that! That's what I call a buckle. It's off Santa's belt, I think. What a beast! It's massive. That was reading 89 to 90 on the Deus. It's just right at the side of the road. It's quite a nice find. Certainly hefty enough. More than likely off a horse, I would imagine. Now to me, this track leading away behind me seems to be a very old footpath or possibly road. At the end of the field, where I've just done with the E-track, there was a bit of a ruin. It had obviously been a building of some sort. This seems to lead to it. So I'm going to give it a go with the Deus and I've knocked the frequency down to 8, 8 kilohertz. Just to try and get that little bit extra depth because I would imagine with all this leaf litter I'm having to go down quite a way. Yes, I could use the E-track but my arm's knackered off using it this morning. So I'm going to give the Deus a blast in here. It's going to be a lot better for getting in amongst all the little roots and everything as well. The E-track with the big coil would be a bit cumbersome in here. So I'm going to give this a go and see what I can find. Ah, the shotgun brass. Well, the path kind of ran out, but up in the wood, there's a hole just there. I think that's possibly a mine, an old mine, where they used to get the lead and silver out. And below that, in what was probably just the, the muck heaps that they were digging out, I've just dug that. And I would think, I would, well, I would imagine that might, might be like off a pickaxe or something, like an old pickaxe. A hacking away, certainly very old, and <laughs> it's a hefty lump of iron. Give a crack and signal. Very nice. Yeah, look at that. How cool that is! Ooh, something been going in and out as well. Ah, that's just awesome. <laughs> There's no half smell of some animal. It's not quite fox, I don't know what it is. Possibly fox. But um, I would love to get into that, but I haven't got a torch. And because it smells pretty funky, I'm not going to go in there. In case there's the beast of Bodman Moor in there or something. You never know. But that's a nice find. I think that's a great find. Excellent. Here's something mighty big and probably is about eight or nine inches down. Give a hell of a signal with the Deus. It was reading 88 to 90, but given the size of it, I think it should have been reading higher. Could be an unexploded bomb, you never know. Although that's an unexploded bomb, I don't want to be the one to explode it. It's the back of an exhaust. Oh God, no wonder it gave a good signal. That's the signal it gave. That was a decent signal and reasonable depth. Getting down there. Uh, what's this? An iron ring or something? That was reading between 76 and 84 on the Deus, using 12 kilohertz. Sorry, not 12 kilohertz, 8 kilohertz. And that gave a cracking signal as well. Perfectly diggable. And it looks like it's another buckle. Loads of buckles today. Loads of buckles, quite a few coins, no silver yet. That's quite a modern one, that one. It's in good condition, and it was about 5 or 6 inches down. Reading 82. Well, that's a different Victoria one, that one. That one's an old head Victoria. Okay, I'm not sure whether you can see it there. 
That's from the late 1800s. In fact, I'm lying, it's from 1900. There's a few decent signals here. That's reading 70 to 71. That's reading oh, 79 to 80. And there's one there that's reading mid 60s. Quite close proximity, so I'm hoping that it's a little coin spill. There we go. That's the first one. It's an old head, Queen Victoria penny, so that's late 1800s, early 1900s. This one's actually just next to the first one that I do. And it's another old head Victoria that I've hit with the spade. <laughs> There's so much iron and crap in this ground, in this field. The pinpointing's pretty difficult. Just as well it wasn't a silver or a gold one. <laughs> All I can hear is mad buzzing and crackling off the iron. But it still managed to pull those coins up in amongst all of that rubbish. So that's very good indeed. Do you know my son went over this exact area before with the Deus? And this was an absolutely cracking signal that I've just found. I don't know how we missed it. Check this out. What a signal that is. It's reading 82. Eh, yeah, well, I don't think you'll be too concerned that he missed that signal. Vaseline, petroleum jelly. Probably he's only got about half an hour of daylight left. And it's a very tricky road to get out of here, so I want to get out before it gets dark. In case the beast that lives in that mine comes and gets us. When I get back to the van, I'll spread the finds out give you a quick look at that. I think there's, oh, I don't know, 10, 15 coins maybe, maybe more. Uh, some nice artefacts and no silver, which is a big surprise. I thought with that amount of coins at least one of them would have been silver, but that's just the way it goes. You don't always get silver, and you don't always get coins, but there's always something there to find. And whatever you find, just be happy with it. Now before I go, I just want to do a bit of a call back to a previous video where I gave some trench art away. There were little pocket put and takes made by a good friend of mine. There was three winners and two of them have claimed their prize. So that has been sent off to them. One has not claimed his prize. I've tried contacting him twice and he hasn't replied to my message or the comment that I put on. So I'm not sure what's going on there, but his name is Malcolm Billing anybody knows him can you send him a message and ask him to contact me with his address uh, or I'm just gonna have to give it away to somebody else which I will do in the next video if I don't hear back from him so there's something to watch out for if you want a pocket put and take and Malcolm Billing doesn't get back to me with his address there's a good chance you could win one in the next video I also want to say a big thank you to everybody who gave me suggestions for videos and also machines that would give good depth. I've watched so many videos that you've recommended, it's been unreal. Um, and I haven't made my mind up. Yes, the pulse induction machines go way down there, but I want something that discriminates as well. Although, that said, the Garrett ATX looked pretty good. Uh, I really like the look of that machine pretty expensive, I mean it's out of my price range, but I just, I'm desperate to see somebody using that on pasture, going way down for deep coins and also for relics, which is what I want to do. There's just no videos of that yet. There's people on the beach, there's people in sand pits doing things, there's just no proper hunting videos with the Garrett ATX. 
So if you're watching and you've got a Garrett ATX, please do some videos where you're in a field like this and I want to see how far that machine can go down because I'm fairly interested in it. I'm also interested in the CTX 3030. It's in a similar price range and from what I've seen it just seems to go as deep as the E-Track. Um, it has got a lot of good features which I'm, I'm pretty excited by. It's got the target tracking, it's got the GPS, it's waterproof as well. So is the Garrett. That would be excellent for me to take on holiday because I go abroad a couple of times a year. And I'm not one for going out on beaches when there's loads of people there because you just look like a scavenger. But if I had an underwater detector, you could just wade in there and nobody's going to see a thing. So those two detectors are kind of on my radar. But I'm really happy with the detectors that I've got. This is the Deus. This Deus, the little 9-inch coil, was absolutely spot on for the footpath in the wood, clambering over rocks, up and down the hills, round trees. Great. It's been great in this pasture as well. The E-Track, with the 18-inch coil, absolutely annihilates coins in deep pasture, where the ground's undisturbed, where other machines might only get down 5, 6 inches. It gets way down there. I have great success with that. In the tighter spaces, it's not so good. Where there's a lot of trash, it's not so good, only because I'm using the huge coil. So I am very pleased with the two machines that I've got. If I could get something else that would get way down there, and ideally be waterproof as well, that's what I'm looking at. So well, thank you to everybody who has guided me towards videos of those two detectors in particular. I've also forgot to say that anybody who wants to make a short channel intro for their channel can do and send it to me I'll upload it same way as I did for the one at the start of this video I've got another two or three to go into the upcoming videos but if you send if you want to send me one you can not a problem at all I'll use it to promote your channel right then so these are the old pennies we'll lay Ooh, all them that's quite good pictures yeah they're in pretty good condition the soil's quite kind to them and what are all of these how many was there how many Eleven. of these? Eleven of them? Yeah. Um, what are those? These ones are half pennies. What? Also known as halfpennies. That one's a Georgian one, so that's from the 1700s. How do you know all of this? Just from finding stuff. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. Count them ones and let's see how many of those we've got. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. Twelve, so that's... Twelve, what are these sir? Oh, they're just other things. So how many of these was it? Twelve? Twelve. And how many of those? Eleven. So what's that in total? Twenty-three. Twenty-three coins, that's not bad. Not bad at all. And here we've got buckles. Various buckles. Um, so that's from a very small horse. And then, I don't know, not necessarily a horse. It might have just been off somebody's bag or something. Yeah. I don't know. Well, it could that, be a very small horse, you're right. That's, that's off a horse. Yeah, I think so. That's huge, that one. And this one, I don't know what this was off, it's just a shame that between James and Ivor they managed to knack it because that was a really nice one, that. Yeah. That's probably the best buckle I've ever found. <laughs> then you've got a clog strap to keep old shoes together. Yeah. A dog tag. Ooh, let's see. What's his name? Oh, it hasn't got a name on, it's just got a number. A lovely button there with a crown, fist, and a cross. Never seen that design before, but I really like that. It's a quite a, a tough looking button. And there's a lead heart. And also outside the mine was this thing, which possibly would have been used to hack away at whatever they were mining. I think it was lead, but um, it could also have been silver because you do get silver in lead mines. So that's quite a nice artifact. Some total of about four hours or so. Oh, and that as well which is that's my best find of the day because I'm intending to do a canny bit of fishing this year and that is absolutely perfect. That's all from me it's time to go now thank you very much for watching and I will catch you next time. A lovely badge with a crown, a fist, and a. Oh, yeah, I remember that one.
a lovely crown with a fist and a cross on there. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> hold on. Just let me talk to the camera. Just, oh, I just want to explain what this button is. Okay. Right. <laughs> um. Hello. Which one is it again? Sixth, seventh, seventh, and seventh. Where is it? Oh yeah. Is that there? It's in there somewhere. That's the imprint of it. I think huh? it's an old penny. Must be down here somewhere. There you go. There it is. That's the epic imprint of it. It was fairly deep, about eight or nine inches. What's the date on that? Well, that's just imprint of. Nineteen. Oh man. <laughs> Nineteen twenty-eight. That's about when the war started. It was after the first world war. It was between between the wars. Yeah, when. Um... Listen, listen. <laughs> Dear me. Uh. <laughs> it wasn't me. Yeah, it was. <laughs> Holy moly. Get in there. Yeah, look at that. Wow. Look at that. Yes. Ah. Oh, man. What a beast it is indeed. I don't know what it is. Donations. Oh, get in there. Look at that. Hey up. Whose is that one? Get in there. Oh man. Get in there. That's class. It's pretty much knackered. Not in the best of shape. It wasn't me. It wasn't me. <laughs> Not me. It was him. There's no. this boy here. Get in there. <laughs> <laughs>